Okay, the fourth leg of success is eating to control blood sugar. And as I mentioned earlier, there's really two parts to this. Number one is to eat every three hours, and number two is to eat low glycemic. The second aspect of this is to eat low glycemic. And this is one of the most important things that you can take away from this program is understanding what low glycemic is and how it relates to weight loss. Glycemic index is a measure of how quickly a carbohydrate converts to sugar in your bloodstream and how high it spikes your blood sugar. We have something to eat which causes our blood sugar to start to rise pretty quickly. Our body then produces insulin in order to get the sugar out of the bloodstream as we discussed earlier. This takes us not only down past the healthy zone, it takes us into a low blood sugar level, which then forces us to want to eat again because when we have low blood sugar, we get jittery and we feel hungry. So we eat again, our blood sugar goes up again, causes our body to produce insulin, and we stay on this up and down blood sugar and insulin production process throughout the day. This causes considerable weight gain. Not to mention, our sensitivity to the insulin goes down over and over time. Now, the other graph that's shown there is what we would like to see our blood sugar look like for maximum health benefit and for improving our ability to lose weight. What you see here is when you eat something that is low glycemic. It takes longer to break down into sugar in our bloodstream. We stay in the healthy blood sugar zone. We never get above the top green line, so therefore our body isn't triggered to produce insulin. Now the great thing about our bodies, again, is from a design standpoint, is we have countering hormones. Insulin is the fat storing hormone. Glucagon is the fat burning hormone. And when we're not producing insulin, our bodies will naturally produce glucagon. So if we stay in the healthy zone, our body will produce the hormone that naturally starts burning fat and releasing those unwanted pounds from our body. Now, to help you better understand the difference between low glycemic and high glycemic and the impact it has on your food choices, we want to talk about some common breakfast cereals because most people have cereal for breakfast. So the two we like to start with are Fruit Loops and Special K. Now, what would you think would be the healthier choice for breakfast cereal when it comes to weight loss? Gabby, what would you think? Special K, that's what most people would pick. The reality is they are both the same for glycemic index. They have a, both of the products have a glycemic index of 69, meaning both of them are going to spike your blood sugar equally. Now it's kind of surprising, but that's, that's what the data shows. Now the next products that we'd like to show you are Cocoa Pops, Cheerios, and Shredded Wheat. Now of these three products, Cocoa Puffs, Cheerios, and Shredded Wheat, which do you think, uh, Katrina, which do you think would be the healthier choice? Shredded wheat. Okay, that's one of the usual choices, and uh, many other times people would choose Cheerios, and certainly Cocoa Puffs would be the last one on the list. But the reality is all three of these cereals have a glycemic index in the high 70s. They're all effectively the same when it comes to spiking your blood sugar. So what that's showing you is that you can't know by looking at the label what is a healthy cereal and what's a non-healthy cereal when it comes to controlling your blood sugar because glycemic index and glycemic load are not terms that are commonly used in North America, nor is any of that nutritional information on the label. Now, the last cereal category that we want to talk about is probably the most common one that people will eat, and that's oatmeal. Now, the, probably one of the most common ones is the little packets of instant oatmeal, right? Everybody knows you just rip them open, you pour them into a bowl, add the boiling water, and poof, you've got breakfast. The problem is this spikes your sugar in your blood almost as much as eating table sugar. It's absolutely horrible for you for blood sugar control. Now, the next level up from instant oatmeal are the typical canisters. And there's really two that you would normally look to choose from in the grocery store. You've got the quick one minute oats and you've got the old fashioned oats. These cook in one minute, these cook in five minutes. Now, the interesting thing is if you were to look at the nutrition facts on the labels of these two products, and we're talking things like calories, uh, fats, cholesterol, sodium, carbohydrates, they are identical. Everything is identical about the nutrition facts on these two products. But if one of them cooks in one minute and the other one cooks in five minutes, what's different about them? Well, it's the level of processing that they've been through. The one minute oats have been processed more than the five minute oats. So they break down into sugar faster. And as a result, you have a high glycemic one minute oatmeal and you have a medium glycemic five minute oatmeal. Both of them spike your blood sugar, but this one spikes it more than this. Now, we wouldn't know that by looking at the nutrition facts, so this is where the education that we can provide you with will come in handy for making the right choices.
If you're going to have oatmeal for breakfast, really the only one that you should choose are steel cut oats. Now these are the closest to nature in oatmeal that you can get. They're pellets instead of flakes because they've been processed less by man. They take longer to cook, but it's worth it because it spikes your blood sugar less than the other two. So even though if you were to look at all these nutrition facts on these labels, you wouldn't see anything different, you need to understand that the one minute oats are high glycemic, the five minute oats are medium, and these are low. So the longer it takes to cook, the healthier it is for you. But our point here isn't to teach you necessarily what oatmeal to go purchase at the grocery store, although that's a nice side effect. The point is that you can't instinctively know by reading the label whether something's high, medium, or low glycemic. And that's why this education is so important. Over the next few weeks, we'll teach you how to know the difference. One of the reasons that's so difficult to know high from medium and low glycemic oatmeal and other foods is because in America, this is not mainstream yet. In most of Europe, Australia, New Zealand, your products are labeled with the glycemic index number, but here we don't have that advantage. Some of the things that are complicated, some of the reasons that they give, is that the glycemic index for a given food varies depending on how it's cooked or how it's processed. Well, you just heard about that, right? We had the three oatmeals varied from high, medium to low depending on how they were processed. It doesn't just happen with oatmeal, it happens with lots of different foods. But a certain degree of education will teach you how to choose wisely, how to choose the healthy foods from the unhealthy foods. Um, a banana, for example, could be medium glycemic when it's fairly um, new from the grocery store, but after it's sat on your counter for a while and turned brown and ripened, now it's very high glycemic. So the degree of ripeness makes a difference. Whether the food is eaten alone or eaten with something else, how you combine the foods makes a difference. How much food do you eat makes a difference. In other words, if even the steel cut oats that we just showed you, if you were to have a, you know, a gigantic bowl of steel cut oats, even that would still spike your blood sugar. So quantities are important. You're not hungry, you're never hungry, and that was important to me. I, I'm a big eater and I love food. It's not a diet and it's not a program. It's just a healthy way of living. It's a different way of thinking, of being, of understanding how your body works, what kind of uh, chemistry is happening inside when you're eating certain foods. And I didn't realize that I needed to stop thinking about going on a diet and I needed to start thinking about living a healthy lifestyle. And that included what I was going to buy at the grocery store and even though good foods are a little more expensive I've actually saved a whole lot of money I don't go out and eat because I enjoy cooking I've had I've discovered all kinds of new kinds of recipes and healthy foods and I'm almost I'm almost actually um, a little upset that I've missed out on good foods for so many years. I always thought that to be healthy and to diet, you had to give up good food. And actually, it's the opposite. You start enjoying and understanding what good food is. 